What's going on, man? What's up? And welcome back to another video. In this one, we got another reaction video, another horror story animated. And since yesterday was Valentine's Day, and I didn't feel like dropping a video because it was Valentine's Day, I hope y'all was with a Valentine. If you wasn't, you should probably like go look at yourself in the mirror and realize, like, you know, you're not, you're not who you think you are. But anyway, Let's get into it. Oh, and if you want to watch the original video, the link will be in the description, of course. My name is Jason, oh. and I am a chef by passion and profession. A head chef, actually. Damn. If I don't go to work, one of the most popular fine dine spots of Damn, LA falls into chaos. y'all can't hear how loud that just wasn't I've been years, working hard lately and usually have to loud. pull off later hours. Something which has been causing a bit of a rift between me and my girl. So Valentine's Day was supposed to be the one where I had to make some sacrifices on the work front. I had to make it a day where my culinary skills would intertwine with the romance I shared with Valentina. She had gone hiking with her best friend, Matt, and was due to return by 7 p.m. for the special dinner I had planned. But I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, hold on, hold on, before, before we get in there, right? It's Valentine's Day. You and your girl have been going through a rough patch. And she goes on a hiking trip with her best friend for the whole day. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. Like. I don't know, bro. That's like five red flags he missing. Like, I want to say so much, but it's like, I just feel like it's no way. Like, that's cool. That shit's not cool. You're not finna spend Valentine's Day with your best friend. He don't got a girl to go spend it with. What are we doing? Thing but romantic. Me off, man. Firstly, I didn't want her to go. I mean, who abandons their boyfriend on Valentine's right. Day to take You're a hike a with their best friend? Go. My bad. I could very much understand that she was trying to teach me a lesson, and I knew that if I had and, to save the night, I should keep my going. mouth shut. You're the I had to spend He's the, the day in a flurry of activities, crafting a menu that Damn, was a labor of love, seared so scallops, bro. her favorite steak done to perfection, and a delicious chocolate mousse for dessert. Everything was laid out meticulously, the table set with candles and roses, she's creating getting, an ambiance befitting the occasion. As the clock ticked past the agreed time, I sent Valentina a text, my anticipation tinged with a hint of worry. Hey, love, dinner's ready. Everything okay? Sorry, running a bit late. The hike's taking longer than expected. Yeah, fuck I tried right. to remain patient, busying myself yeah, with last-minute touches to the dishes. But as the minutes turned into hours, her Damn, text started veering into the realm of the bazaar. You've been gone a while. Should I start worrying? Got distracted. Found something weird in the woods. I'll tell you about it when I get there. Her vague responses I know did it little to quell my weird mushrooms. To add to my frustrations, I noticed a rat dart across the kitchen. We'd had a minor infestation problem lately, but this was the worst possible timing. I couldn't let a rat win as well now. Grabbing a bat, I gave chase, my mood no souring way. further. The I rat proved elusive, evading my every attempt to hit it, ultimately vanishing into the hole in the wall. Defeated and angered, I tossed the bat aside, my mind now a whirlwind of concerns. Valentina's delayed return, her odd messages, and now this infuriating rat problem. It felt like the universe was conspiring to ruin our night. Val, it's getting really late. When are you coming home? Lost track of time. Heading back now. Sorry, yeah, babe. Yeah, fucking right. I wanted to believe her. Man, but that was a nagging busy. suspicion crept She's into in the my woods, thoughts. getting woods. Was there something me, going on let between me say that her better. and Matt? She's in the woods, the getting was wood. like a splinter in my mind, refusing well, to be ignored. Day. By the time the clock struck Did 11, my you. worry had morphed into a blend of anger and anxiety. Then, finally, the door opened. Valentina stepped in, but she was different. Her usually vibrant demeanor was replaced by an unsettlingly subdued aura. Her eyes lacked their usual yeah, she spark, put it on her and too. her movements were strangely lethargic. As I greeted her, ready to express my frustration, she cut me off, insisting repeatedly that she was already full and didn't want any of the dinner I'd prepared. Her dick. This was unlike her. Jesus, she I'm sorry, always relished this, my cooking. This is You're not hungry, but me. you love my steak, and I've been preparing all day. I just don't feel like eating right now, Jason. She I had something had on the steak. hike. Her Good words steak. were off, her tone distant. 
It was as if she was avoiding something, hiding a secret that lay just beyond my reach. The apartment, usually warm and inviting, now felt cold, as if a chill had followed her inside. As the night progressed, the the atmosphere of the apartment shifted. There was a tangible sense of unease. I couldn't point, Uh, but I thought objects seemed to move on their own. Lights flickered without reason, and a chilling cold enveloped the space even though the radiator was working. Valentina's behavior became increasingly bizarre as well. She mumbled things in between in a language I couldn't recognize, her voice taking on an eerie timbre. Maybe I was just finding reasons. I left one of the busiest days at my restaurant to be with her, but she was disinterested, like I've never seen her before. The evening had turned from a romantic celebration into a surreal, unnerving experience. I found myself questioning not just our relationship, but my very perception of reality. What had happened on that hike? What had she found in the woods? And most importantly, what was wrong with her? The Valentina that stood before me now was a far cry from the woman I knew and loved. She appeared a bit strange. The clock struck midnight, yet the eerie aura that enveloped the apartment showed no signs of waning. Standing there with the Valentine's dinner I had painstakingly prepared lying untouched, I felt a mixture of resentment and profound concern. Valentina's behavior was increasingly perplexing. Her aversion to the food, uh, her distant demeanor, and her comments about being full was unsettling to say the least. She had been following intermittent fasting religiously before we even started dating. I knew that the woman would do anything to stick to her diet, so I knew that she was lying. Val, this isn't like you. You've been acting off ever since you got back. What happened on that hike? I just don't feel like eating right now, Jason. I had something on the hike. Her Mm -hmm. dismissive tone irked Mm me. The more I pressed for clarity, the more she retreated into the shell of ambiguity. My mind raced with possibilities, the most unsettling of which was the thought of her and Matt. But as the night progressed, the nature of my concern shifted dramatically. Valentina's behavior became increasingly bizarre. She paced the apartment restlessly, her movements erratic and uncoordinated. At one point, she stopped abruptly, staring blankly at the wall as if seeing something invisible to my eyes. Valentina, what are you looking at? Can't you hear them, Jason? The whispers. There were no whispers, just the deafening silence of the apartment punctuated by the occasional flicker of the lights. A chill crept down my spine the room inexplicably growing colder. My breath became visible, fogging in the frigid air. I wrapped my arms around myself, struggling to make sense of the rapidly deteriorating situation. As the night deepened, the apartment seemed to take on a life of its own. Doors slammed shut without any draft, lights dimmed and brightened of their own accord, and shadows moved in the periphery of my vision, playing tricks on my mind. Valentina's strange behavior escalated in tandem with the paranormal activities. She began mumbling in a language I couldn't understand. Her voice distorted All right, don't that almost me. That's crazy. times. Panic began to set in. The woman I loved was transforming into something unrecognizable, something frightening. I tried to approach her, to reach out and understand what was happening, but she recoiled from my touch, her skin icy cold. Val, please talk to me. What's going on with you? It's so cold, Jason. So very cold. Her words sent shivers through me. The temperature of the apartment had dropped further, a supernatural chill that seemed to emanate from her very being. In a moment of horrifying clarity, I realized that whatever was happening to Valentina was beyond the realm of the natural, beyond anything I could comprehend. Something happened on that hike. I gave call to Matt to ask what was up, but he was unavailable. The apartment suddenly became a theater of the macabre, with Valentina as the unwilling protagonist. With my own eyes, I saw objects levitating momentarily before crashing to the ground, mirrors fogging over as if breathed upon by unseen entities, and the shadows seemed to dance with a life of their own. Valentina's demeanor oscillated between moments of lucidity and terrifying episodes where she seemed entirely possessed by an unknown force. 
As I stood there, torn between fleeing and staying to help the woman I loved, a dreadful thought crossed my mind. Was Valentina under the influence of something supernatural? The notion seemed ludicrous, yet the events of the night defied any logical explanation. In a desperate bid to restore some normalcy, I attempted to engage her in conversation, to pull her back. Val, we need to get you help. This isn't right. <laughs> help? It's too late for help, Jason. Her laughter was chilling, void of any Bro, warmth or so humanity. Flags, it echoed sucks. through the apartment, a sinister sound that seemed to mock my helplessness. I was out of my depth, facing a, a situation male. that was rapidly spiraling a into he a nightmare. The, the woman I had planned to spend a romantic evening with was now at the center of a terrifying mystery, one no that threatened to engulf us both in its dark embrace. No survival the night escapes. had transformed into a surreal horror, far removed from no the romantic gut. evening I had envisioned. No Valentina, period. the woman I had known and loved, was now a stranger. Her behavior increasingly uh, erratic and terrifying. The apartment, once a sanctuary, had become a stage for inexplicable and chilling phenomena. Valentina's transformation was the most disturbing of all. Her moments of lucidity were fleeting, quickly giving way to episodes where she seemed entirely consumed by an unknown force. She kept speaking in a he language that was alien watch. to my ears, He's her voice same thing taking I'm on a sinister, otherworldly quality. Val, what's happening to you? This isn't normal. We need to find help. Help? There's no help for what's inside me. Her response sent a wave of terror through me. It was becoming increasingly clear that we were dealing with something beyond the natural realm. The apartment itself seemed am to I, Am I tripping, bro? Or has he said this shit like three times? The nigga has said like, you need help. And we're dealing with the supernatural like three fucking times. Am I tripping? Or like, I like, like they've been in the same spot doing the same thing for like the five minutes, last five minutes. I don't know if I'm tripping or not react to her presence. I realized that the closer I went to her, the chillier it got. She was the reason for the cold. You in one particularly horrifying moment, Valentina's said, body was like contorted the in ways that defied oh. human physiology, oh. her movements jerky and unnatural. Her eyes, once warm and loving, now bore into mine with an intensity that was almost predatory. As the night progressed, the supernatural occurrences escalated. The very walls of the apartment seemed to pulsate with an unseen energy, amplifying the sense of dread that permeated the air. The boundary between reality and nightmare blurred, leaving me questioning my sanity. I panicked and called her friend again, but still got no response. In a moment of desperation, I reached out to Valentina, oh. hoping to connect with whatever part of her remained. Valentina, please, if you can hear me, fight this. I don't know what's happening, but I'm here for you. She's gonna lose it. Too late. Her words trailed off into an eerie whisper, her gaze fixated on something beyond my sight. The atmosphere in the apartment turned even more sinister, as if her words had invoked an unseen presence. Then a terrifying vision seized me. I found myself in a mountainous terrain, tied to a tree, getting spat on by men in black masks who took turns to come ahead and cut me with a knife. Jesus. They were chanting in some strange language, the same that I had heard Valentina say, and walking around in circles. As I yelled in pain, lost right, blood and grew unconscious. That, I saw eagles floating up. I don't know what he's saying because I turned it down. I don't want to hear none of that chanting. I snapped back to reality and looked at. at Valentina, her form now barely recognizable as the woman I loved. The sinister entity that had taken hold of her seemed to be growing in strength, feeding off her energy and the fear that filled the apartment. The vision. Was it the entity's way of letting me know what had happened to it? The night had descended into a waking nightmare, a battle against a supernatural force that defied explanation. Valentina, caught in the grip of this malevolent spirit, was both the victim- So right now, right, it's Valentine's Day. Your girl been out with her best friend hiking all day. She come back, she possessed. What are you doing? Are you staying, trying to help? Are you gonna kill her? Are you gonna stay, try to help and like exercise the demon? You're going to kill her or you're going to leave and just 
move on with your life. Me personally, I'm either gonna, I'm either gonna like try to exercise her, and if that doesn't work, then I'll probably just probably kill her. Probably kill her because that's probably what she deserved for not being with me on Valentine's Day in the first time in the, in the first place. Should have just been with a nigga on Valentine's Day, but you want to be a dickhead and not be with her man and be with her best friend. So shit, it's what she get, you know? Dumb and the conduit for the terror right, that I'm, unfolded right, around I'm us. Full, the turmoil in the apartment right, I mean reached that its zenith. Hatery, the air charged the with is. an almost tangible malevolence. Hater, or, or Valentina's behavior was now That's entirely right now. crazy. Her actions dictated oh. by the sinister force that had overtaken her. A relationship, once defined by love and understanding, had developed into a nightmarish struggle for survival, and a desperate attempt to reach her to break through the darkness that enveloped her, I initiated a confrontation. Valentina, this isn't you! Whatever has taken a hold of you, you need to fight it! I wonder what that shit fight feels it? like to be possessed. Oh, said, but I have already Nothing can probably won. ever possess me. I'm, her I'm too, too much of a red to the bone. Fashion. It was clear that the entity speaking through body. her was mocking my efforts, reveling in the chaos that it wrought. As we argued, the Shit, supernatural phenomena around up. us intensified. Objects flew across the room with violent force, narrowly missing us. The flickering lights cast grotesque shadows that seemed to dance mockingly on the walls. In the midst of our heated exchange, strange wounds started popping up on our body. They were mm. intricate and seemed to pulsate with a dark energy. Val, what are those symbols? <laughs> Aren't they beautiful? Each one a reminder of how they stabbed me. The revelation sent a wave of horror through me. The situation had escalated beyond a mere possession. It was as if Valentina had become a vessel for something ancient and malevolent. The climax of our confrontation came when Valentina, in a fit of rage, hurled her dinner plate across the room. It shattered against the wall, its fragments scattering like the pieces of our once normal life. And that is when the rat emerged from behind the crack in the wall. In a horrifying display of her new unnatural nature, she lunged at a rat scurrying across the floor, catching it with terrifying speed and biting its head off with a gruesome crunch. Val, what are you doing? This isn't you! Oh, but it is, Jason. This is the real me now. The grotesque act yeah, was a stark gut-wrenching confirmation of the sinister transformation she had undergone. The Valentina I knew and loved was gone, replaced by this monstrous entity that wore her face. In that moment of shocking violence, I realized the full extent of the horror we were engulfed in. The supernatural force that had claimed Valentina was not just controlling her, it had meddled with her very being, warping her into something unrecognizable. As the entity inside her continued to manifest its power, I understood that I was not just fighting to save Valentina. I was fighting against an ancient evil presence that threatened to consume everything. The terror do? of the night reached its harrowing climax as be? I stood, paralyzed with as? fear and disbelief, in our once peaceful apartment. Valentina, or the entity that she had become, stared at me with eyes that were a horrifying mix of the familiar and the utterly alien. The darkness within her seemed to pulsate with a life of its own. In a moment of terrifying clarity, the entity possessing Valentina began to speak, its voice a chilling blend of her own and something ancient and malevolent. You still don't understand, do you, Jason? The power I possess, the ancient lineage I now continue. I listened, horror struck as the entity revealed its true nature. It spoke of an ancient ritualistic sacrifice, a malevolent spirit bound to the earth, seeking a vessel to inhabit and continue its dark legacy. The entity had been dormant, waiting for the right host, and it found that in Valentina during her hike with Matt. Where's Matt? What happened to him? Why do you think I wasn't hungry? The realization oh, hit me like a physical there. blow. The entity had consumed Matt, explaining Valentina's lack of hunger and the strange fullness she had claimed to feel. But now it hungered again, and its gaze upon me was predatory, filled with a sinister intent. What have you done with Valentina? 
Where is she? Valentina is here with me. Part of me now. A sickening sense of dread washed over me as the entity moved towards me with an unnatural grace. Its intentions were clear. I was to be its next victim. I you backed no away, weapons, my yeah. mind racing for a way to escape this nightmare. But the entity was relentless. It cornered me, its strength overwhelming. In a desperate bid for survival, I grabbed the nearest object, my chef's knife. The chase through the apartment cut was a blur, up, a terrifying game of cat and mouse with me as the prey. The entity wearing Valentina's face lunged at me, its eyes filled with up. malevolent glee. I acted on instinct, the knife in my <laughs> hand finding its mark. The entity let out a blood-curdling scream as it collapsed, the malevolent light in its eyes flickering out. I stood there, shaking, the knife dripping with blood. The weight of what I had done was crushing. I had just killed Valentina, the woman I you loved, did the right thing, so. even though it wasn't really her anymore. Tears streaming down my face, I called 911, my voice breaking as I tried to explain the unexplainable. Please, you have to help me. I, I had to do it. She, it wasn't her anymore. When the police arrived, they found me a broken man, slumped on the kitchen floor. But to my utter shock and horror, Valentina's body was gone. No trace of the entity, no blood, nothing. It was as if mm. the night's events had been a figment of my imagination. G G just the officers friendly. left, casting dubious glances my way, their suspicion evident. Alone, I tried to piece together the shattered remnants of my sanity. How could she just disappear? Was the entity still out there? As Obviously. I struggled to comprehend the night's events, a small, chilling detail caught my eye. A rat, its head missing, meandering across the kitchen floor. It was an eerie echo of the night's horror, a reminder that what had transpired was all too real. The reality of the situation dawned on me. The entity, though wounded, was still at large, its malevolent presence a lurking shadow in my life. I was left to grapple with the guilt, the fear, and the unanswerable questions that now filled my world. In the aftermath of that Valentine's night, my existence became a haunting graveyard, a life overshadowed by the darkness of an ancient, unfathomable evil. You gotta get your get back, no cap. You can't let that nigga scare you for the rest of your life. Like, you gotta be a man about it, get, a, get your get back or something. <clears throat> but anyway, man, I hope that y'all enjoyed this one. If y'all did, leave a like, a comment, Subscribe, you know, if you if you like in the video and you can know you can turn the post notification bells on too. shit. It don't hurt, but you're probably going to see reaction videos just for the next couple of days because I'm not going to be able to record videos. So I'm going to have pre-recorded videos coming out and stuff. But yeah, that's it until the next one. Peace, love and positivity. And I will catch y'all in the next one. It's two options in this world, is you gon' win or lose? Is you gon' take the risk or not, you know you gotta choose Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos